All right, this podcast is part of the More Than Baseball family. Check them out at morethanbaseball.org. Uh, They're working hard to assist minor leaguers during their career and after with career advice, financial, educational, even mental health um, services, and so much more. Um, check them out at uh, morethanbaseball.org. Their website will be in the, the in the description. Also, check out Minor League Advocates. They are working hard to help out minor leaguers as well. Um, all right, super excited for my guest today. Drafted by the Angels uh, in, in the 18th round back in 2019 out of Princeton University. Uh, shot, absolutely just shot through the minors. Uh, Ryan Smith, how's it going, brother? Good, really good. Thank you for having me on. I'm uh, excited to be here. Yeah, and like we had mentioned early briefly, uh, you had the rare mon- uh, rare Tuesday off, which yeah. is when we're, when we're recording. How was it playing on Memorial Day? Like, how was that vibe? It was cool. Um, so I got lucky starting yesterday although definitely not my best start you know has been my best start to a year but but we're uh you know we're on the right path and, and getting there but i got lucky that i got to fly out on sunday from sacramento um you know as a starter they kind of flew me out the day before but the whole rest of the team i think they flew at like seven um in the morning yesterday so they had to wake up at four in the hotel in sacramento and fly out so it was definitely interesting um you know having played on monday the flight and i think the um, el paso flew in yesterday morning also so I think it was, you know, an interesting situation with playing on the Monday, teams waking up early in the morning, taking the flight. Um, you know, it's almost June, but it was like 45, 50 degrees here. So the, the weather wasn't too uh, too exciting for baseball weather, but we still got a pretty good crowd. It was exciting. Um, you know, it was, it was cool and, and uh, you know, fans brought the energy and it was exciting to play on Memorial Day, um, you know, kind of didn't know what to do with ourselves today with the Tuesday off day. I think yeah. it's the first time we've been off on a Tuesday in the last two years. Um, so it's a little something different, but it was cool. What do you normally do like on an off day? Like, cause obviously it's you, you play six days and to get that usually it's Monday. You have the day off. Right. Right. So most off days, um, especially in triple A, there's, you know, a flight involved. Um, it's very rarely will we leave after a game on a Sunday. So pretty much every, um, Monday off day where, you know, kind of getting your stuff ready, packing your bag, laundry day for me, kind of getting everything ready for, for the week ahead um, and either flying out that night if we were at home the previous week or flying in um, from wherever we were the previous week if we had been on the road. Um, kind of just like a, all right, let me get everything in order, um, you know, wake up a little bit later and then maybe um, see how much time we have. A lot of guys like to golf. I'm not a very good golfer. So I'm still kind of working on my individual game before I'll bring it out in front of mm-hmm. some of these guys who can, you know, are scratch golfers and are shooting par on some pretty hard courses. Um, but, you know, it, it depends on the day. Today was a little bit different since we didn't have any travel, didn't have a flight. A bunch of us went in. Um, we actually, my first movie I've been to probably in like four years, we went and saw the Top Gun movie. Um, I mean, without spoilers, was I mean, was it pretty good? Yeah, no, it was good. It was good. I hadn't seen the first one. I'm not very good with movies like you could show me super famous actors and be like wait who's that again um so as like a very casual movie watcher i thought it was good um i don't know what the critics think i think it seems to have gotten a pretty good response but yeah i mean i I would recommend going as someone who's not like a crazy movie fan um so it was cool then we went got some lunch um just kind of hanging out nothing nothing too much might throw the uh the hockey game on later um, just to like, you know, see something else. I, I woke up this morning under the impression that the uh, NBA finals were starting today. So I was kind of excited that we'd get to see the game on our off day. But I uh, read Thursday is Tuesday. So then it'll start till Thursday. So don't have much, too much planned for the rest of the day. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm a, I'm actually a big Warriors fan because I'm from okay. Oakland area. So like I grew okay. up and it's funny. Like I live in Wisconsin now. So people will automatically assume Bat and Wagon fan, whatever. Right. Um, but it's all good. I mean, I, I, I suffered through years of like, Oh, look on Subhub. The tickets are ten dollars. You know, yeah. and now it's like a hundred yeah, something yeah. dollars for like standing yeah. room only. You know, uh, yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah, and no, I guess you get to kind of adopt the Bucks as a uh, as a championship last year as a local thing. So it's cool. You get some pretty mm-hmm. recent NBA success. I know. I'm excited for the the Warriors. Uh, I'm not a big hockey guy. I actually haven't watched much hockey I'm, this season. I'm really not either. Uh, but some of the guys in the clubhouse are. So it's been on. You know, and I've, mm-hmm. I've been getting into it a little bit. And sure. Um, you know, just a sports fan in general. But yeah, I, I could probably name one or two guys on each team. So I'm definitely not like some hockey aficionado. No, no worries, man. No worries. Um, yeah. So wait, you're you from New York, right? Originally? Yes. 
So how was um? I actually had a, I don't know if you know Brad Case. He plays for the minor. Yeah, uh, for yeah, the, no, I, I know Brad Case too. Okay, him and I actually played together in 2016. We played for the Montauk Mustangs in the uh, Hamptons League. Um, okay. After my freshman year of college, so yeah, I, I actually played with Brad. I know him pretty well. Yep. Yeah, awesome. I had him on not too long ago. Um, so I, he had mentioned just like the way he threw, like compared to the, everyone else in New York, like he was throwing really hard com- uh-huh. like, compared to like California kids and Florida kids where they can practice year round. Like, right? He wouldn't. He wouldn't even compare. So how was like your high school? Like, was it pretty good? Like, how was the talent there? Yeah, I, there's definitely a wide range of talent. Um, I mean, my high school, I'd say, is kind of known as like a lacrosse school. I was, you know, just loaded with Division One lacrosse commits and and definitely pretty big lacrosse town. But our baseball was solid. Um, you know, in terms of like my high school baseball team, we were one of the better teams in the county. But also, um, you know, it's like I my graduated class maybe three hundred fifty. So like, it's a lot of schools in our county, a lot of schools in a in the area, and like a pretty populated. Um, you know, densely populated suburban area, but like not big schools. So each team is there, there's a varying range depending kind of on just, I guess, like youth programs in each town and how many athletes each school kind of lost to lacrosse, how many athletes each school lost to private schools. Um, you know, if, if we didn't, we lost a lot of guys to different private schools in the area. If we kind of kept everyone in our town, I think we would have been really, really good. We were pretty good. I mean, it wasn't anything um, like you weren't seeing any anything crazy but everybody we play like three game series so everybody's first start would be pretty good you know usually a guy going somewhere to play d1 or d2 or, or like a, a you know pretty high level arm and then the second guy in those in those did they three starts like would you be the, I, I would number throw one? the first game okay. usually yeah yeah um and then usually if a team was really good their second guy would be similar so my senior year we had a guy who ended up going to university of maine so we had two division one commits so we you know we we're like wow our two starters are, are gonna mm-hmm. be pretty kind of pretty loaded um, and some of the teams, you know, maybe be a really small like guy going to a smaller school and other teams kind of they other than their first guy, they didn't really have much. And then depending on on how good you were, the really good teams or third starters, also a guy going to play in college who, you know, had an arm and stuff like that and then kind of faded off. Um, our third starter was, was really good, but what I he didn't go and play anywhere. Um, kind of his choice. But, um, you know, like it was kind of varying. So I would say we were like not the best team not the top two or three teams in our county, probably like within the top five or six. Um, so it was, it was good. I mean, our, the travel baseball experience is really where like recruiting exposure came and exposure mm-hmm. to kind of a lot better players. Um, so coming from Long Island, like, you know, it's 2 million people on Long Island and, and a lot yeah. of, a lot of baseball players, but you know, cause everything's, Oh, it's not it's small. So there, there are a lot of good players and I mean, you know, dozens and tons of travel teams, but the, team I played for is kind of like the team in Nassau County. And there's one team in Suffolk County. that's kind of the team. And that was kind of our competition on Long Island. Anybody else, we kind of steamroll and then we go off Long Island and, and kind of meet our match a little bit, um, you know, and see those kids from other States and, and other areas and, you know, kind of get your eyes open. Like, okay, these are the guys. If I want to compete in terms of playing in college and getting drafted someday, like though, you know, you can kind of, kind of match up going to those big tournaments in Jupiter or in, uh, perfect game in Georgia or those kind of things. So it's definitely like not the most loaded baseball talent in my area, but it was good and competitive and fun. And then we were able to get off Long Island and kind of challenge ourselves a little bit more. Nice. Awesome. Um, you, you had mentioned like the recruiting kind of when you were doing like the uh, like um, summer ball, or not summer ball, right. but um, mm-hmm. yeah, travel ball. Um, how, well, how were your visits like? Like, what team, what universities or colleges were like? Were you interested? Because obviously, you went to a very good school. Um, yeah, but like what, my, what my recruiting ones process kind of was pretty late and then happened all at once. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still pretty small now, but I was definitely one of the smaller guys on on the bigger travel teams um, growing up. And I really, I guess, like my, you know, I, I knew I wanted to play college baseball. I had good grades and. Um, you know, I, I thought I was pretty good, but you know, it, what we would show up to the tournaments we were sophomores and there'd be guys throwing 90 miles an hour. And I was throwing 81, 82, 83. And yeah, you know, I, I would get guys out and pitch really well, but it wasn't, you know, I wasn't just blowing fastballs by guys just throwing 90 at 14. Um, I, I kind of then was like, okay, like I think someday I'm going to be able to go play D1 baseball or play at such and such school, but you know, you don't really know. Um, so I'd reached out to some smaller schools, 
um, like division three schools were interested. So I was looking at like academic division three schools like MIT or Johns Hopkins or, you know, different and NESCAC schools in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I kind of always deep down, I was like, okay, I can, I can play better baseball somewhere. Um, so my junior year, I started throwing a little bit harder, uh, but you're not, you know, coaches have their own games in the spring and no one's going to come watch a, a high school baseball game in Long Island on their, you know, one midweek off day to, to recruit a kid. So it's kind of, okay, I have to, you know, go out and perform this summer. Um, and it's, that's an awkward time because you have some guys you're playing with who are committed somewhere you're seeing, you know, then you have the kids going to LSU or Vanderbilt have been committed for three years already. Um, mm -hmm. so I threw, I was throwing really well that summer, throwing a little bit harder, 84, 85, 86, which nowadays for a senior high school seems not very hard, but going to my yeah, senior year, so so you know, that, that was, that was pretty hard. Um, so then towards the, I still hadn't had any D1 offers, but was kind of going back and forth with some schools. I ended up going to this showcase called like a head first showcase. It's kind of like an academic school showcase um, on Long Island. Actually, it was like an hour away from my house. And I went and the setup was like each pitcher got to throw two innings. There were five hitters in each inning, no matter what. And it started with a one, one count. Um, and which the one, one count favors the pitcher significantly because you can kind of just flip in a breaking ball and then throw it as hard as you can and try to strike the guy out, you know, if, if you get the two strikes that quickly. Uh, so I think I struck out like all the 10 batters I faced throwing like 87, 88, which is hardest I've ever thrown. Uh, it's kind of worked out. And then I went from having no offers to like 15 offers right after that uh, from a lot of the schools I'd been really interested in. Some of them I'd already kind of like gone and visited just as a student, you know, doing the normal mm -hmm. tour, um, stuff like that. So I, I visited, I wasn't able to visit all those schools in like the last week of the summer before school starting. So kind of narrowed it down a little bit, um, mostly to the Ivy League schools, just like, you know, that's, I, I was always kind of a student and kind of want, like, had my sights set. Um, so what other Ivy League schools were interested in you? Um, so I talked to almost all, um, Columbia. I went on a visit to, um, I went on visits to Cornell and Dartmouth, um, was going to go to Harvard, but, but then I was kind of like, okay, I'm locked in on Princeton after I'd visited there. Cause it was, schedules were changing school was starting they were coming back from recruiting trips everything um i, I kind of talked to all the schools just to a varying degree and some of them had seen me more so they were just more ready okay we get you to campus now get an offer now and i was you know especially going into senior year and and it being in the summer it's kind of ready to like okay this is fun and i'm happy i'm getting all this interest now but i you know I'd, and i kind of went to princeton had a visit and, and fell in love with it so that was kind of the end of it so um was happy to commit there. So I, I didn't end up visiting every school, uh, but kind of had contact with pretty much all of them. Yeah. And like, I mean, you can, you can brag on yourself, obviously you, an Ivy league school, you're a very smart person. Um, that's, that's awesome that you were able to go there. Um, how was, yeah. how was their baseball program? Um, Cause I mean, I know a lot of us may be, maybe wrongly, but we think like Ivy league, we think more academics, not so yeah. much. Like, no, I mean, I mean, Ivy League baseball definitely. I I showed up on campus and I was one of the worst guys on the team for sure. I had not, you know, I was still a scrawny little high school kid. Um, hadn't really been in the weight room as much as pretty much everyone else. Uh, my freshman year, we went and we won. We won the Ivy League. Got to see a regional. My first college series was against Louisville in 2016. That was they had six draft picks in the top 100. So it was like Brendan McKay, Kyle Funkhauser. Mm -hmm. um, I forget the guy's first name, Harrington, like their, their top three starters, like, whoa. Yep. Um, like Corey Ray was a first rounder, Brent McKay was first yep. round in the lineup, all these guys. So like, I was like, okay, this is some legit, um, legit baseball. Um, you know, my freshman year, I, I barely threw, like we had, we had a really good staff of older guys. I got to learn a lot from, and I really wasn't ready to, to throw that much. Like I was not throwing super hard and kind of wild. And I got to learn a lot. And like, that was kind of a good, I guess wake up call could be a good word of just like, okay, I got to – this summer, you know, I got to do this, 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 mm -hmm. come back stronger, come back more consistent, throwing harder, fixing my breaking ball, that kind of stuff. Um, so, no, definitely we we kind of struggled a little bit more in terms of winning-wise my last three years when I got to pitch a lot more. Uh, yeah. But we, we always had a good – a pretty good roster, a good pitching staff, and, um, you know, some guys I played with also still, still playing throughout the minors. Um, and the rest of the Ivy League was always really good. I mean, I remember um, – you know, my, my freshman year was like guys with their 87, 80, 89 was hard. And then my senior year was we had a series against Harvard, a uh, weekend series against Harvard. And every single one of the starters at least touched 93, 
they had a guy like touch 97, two of us threw 95 wow. for us. Like they had another guy touch 94. So it was like, it went from 89 was hard to now everybody's sitting in the mid nineties, just like airing it out. Isn't it crazy um, how that changes in just a couple yeah, was, many it, years? Like everyone's it really that. was so fast. And I know this year, Penn and Columbia both had great years. You know, Columbia, like the Ivy league kind of in the past is always, okay, you get in the NCAA tournament, you're going to be a four seed in the regional. Now pretty much every year guys are getting three seeds. Uh, so I think it just kind of speaks to the the quality of the conference improving and, um, you know, guys are realizing in high school, hey, I can go play good baseball and get a chance to get drafted and also, um, you know, get a get a good education and, and kind of enjoy um, time in college. So I think it's going to keep improving year to year as more and more guys keep playing. And, um, you know, guys like are developing later now, you know, with different technology and, and different throwing programs and, um, you know, just – everybody's throwing harder now. Like, you know, I, I think if I went back to high school now in my own body, when I was 16, I would be throwing harder than I was just because you know more. And, um, you know, it's kind of like, okay, if everybody's doing it around you, you just kind of step up your game too. Uh, so I think, you know, the quality will just keep improving. No, for sure. And you mentioned Louisville, like this, I, I've, I can, I've said this a couple of times, like this may be an unofficial Louisville pod. Cause I've had like maybe six or seven Louisville guys on from those years. And like, uh-huh. it's no joke how talented, like 16, yeah. 17, even now, but like 16, 17, and 18. Yeah, they were like really, seven or eight guys consistently, like in the top. They were loaded. Rounds. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They were, they were loaded. Yep. That was, um, I, I remember my first, sorry, go, go. No, go. no, 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 go, go. I remember my first college at bat was Brendan McKay, who was like, you know, the two way player, <laughs> yep. big name. I'm a freshman. Um, I throw, you know, lefty on lefty. I throw like two sliders, both nowhere close. And I hear my coach, and you know, it, we were down probably like five or six. Like I was getting in there for the first time. And I hear my coach scream from the dugout, like, throw him a fastball now. And like he heard it, I heard it. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh, no. it's gonna go with fence. And I kind of yeah. jammed him and got a pop up. I'm like, all right, like I can I can do this and yeah. settle in a little bit. But um, yeah, it was definitely definitely an experience going to play down there for for my first call series. Yeah, and like what a confidence booster, too. You get Brandon McKay to pop up one of the you know top college athletes right. at the time and you know, that has to be a confidence booster for yourself. Yeah, yeah, no, it was definitely cool. Definitely, definitely experienced getting to uh, play. Like, it was it was always nice going on a trip and playing in ACC or SEC or, or you know, big-name school kind of start the year. So it was, it was cool. Um, do, do you know Simon Rosenblum Larson? He played for Harvard. Um, yeah, we played. I remember he, he kind of carved us. I remember my – it must have been when I was a junior, so 2018, I guess that was. Yeah, I, I don't know, like, know him personally, but I, I definitely remember him throwing against us, and, and I see him on Twitter and everything. Yeah, yeah so he's one of the co-founders of More Than Baseball. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. He's obviously doing great work, he and the other guys there. Um, he had mentioned that Yale was Harvard's biggest rival, obviously, that had mm-hmm. a Yale-Harvard uh, rivalry. Who was your guys' right. biggest rivalry? Overall, I mean, there's definitely like the like for Princeton athletics, there's definitely like the Harvard Yale Princeton rivalries. Um, uh, Penn, I would say, is kind of a rival in every sport just because, like, kind of location based, and you have like the mm-hmm. Philly Jersey kind of rivalry. Baseball wise, when at least in my time there, it'd probably be Penn or Columbia. Columbia was good, we'd play a lot of close series against them. Um, the years before I got there, Columbia had been winning the Ivy League a lot. We won my first year. It was kind of back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, Penn was always really – I mean, even this year, they were really, really good, and they still weren't able to win the, the Ivy League. You know, tough a tough break in championship series. But, like, they've had the loaded roster for the past few years, so I think they were always kind of like a team to beat. Um, so I guess those two, other than Harvard, you know, it really varies sport to sport so much. Like, you know, in – some in lacrosse versus football versus track and field versus basketball versus fencing. There's, there's, you know, different, different teams compete at different levels, but I guess for us, I'd say probably Penn or Columbia. Awesome. Very cool. Um, so how was your draft experience? Obviously you get uh, selected. Um, like how was like, were teams interested in you or, or, or what other teams were interested in you like ahead of time? And like, obviously you did like the questionnaires and all that stuff, but mm-hmm. um, how was that whole experience and how did that play out? Yeah. So, my sophomore year, I, you know, I, I started to throw hard. I threw a lot more in games and was seeing 90s for the first time. So I, um, you know, I, I kind of thought, okay, maybe, you know, if I have a good summer, my going in my junior year, I can get some attention. So I played in the NECBL after that summer, um, pitched really well, had a good year. Um, 
that fall we had, you know, it'd be like a scout day on campus and, and stuff like that. So I got a couple, I got, you know, talked some scouts that fall, fill out some questionnaires, went into the spring. I'm like, okay, like maybe, you know, maybe get signed as a junior. Um, and I like, I would go out and throw two or, you know, the first three, four, five inning scoreless. And then I never made it through the six my entire junior year. Um, you know, I, I was, I was throwing well in the beginning. So, you know, scouts kind of took attention to that. Okay. This kid's throwing well, like he's got a six, five, five, whatever ERA, but like he's throwing well, I was throwing pretty hard. I, you know, just now 92, 93, 94 topping out. So it was just like getting some attention. I'm like, okay, maybe this will happen. Maybe it won't. Not a lot of guys get drafted as juniors in the Ivy league undersized and eh, we'll see what happens. Um, but I definitely had some attention from teams and, and kind of went into the draft my junior thinking I would get taken, um, ended up not getting taken. So I was like, okay, well, you know, still got another year. And I, I went and played on the Cape, um, that summer. So after that and going into that fall, it was kind of pretty much every team I was talking to, especially as a senior, like you have, you know, there's such a little risk in drafting you. Right. Um, so it was kind of like every team was interested in a lefty touching 95, you know, it was, you know, relatively polished in terms of throwing different pitches, had started, relieved in college, played in a couple of different summer leagues. I had a good year my senior year. So, um, yeah, definitely like attention from teams wise. It, was, it wasn't like, you know, cross checkers are flying out to see me, but in terms of the area scouts, I'd, I'd talk to pretty much everyone. Um, so, I, you know, my senior year, obviously I don't want to say 100%, but I kind of knew I would get taken. Um, so then it was kind of where, hoping to get taken on day two, um, kind of as like a senior sign in the – the eighth, ninth, 10th round ever. So I remember my, I graduated um, the day two of the draft. So I talked to a lot of teams like, Hey, keep your phone on. Like you're going to be graduation, but we may call you seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th round. So I was really hoping, Oh, you know, could be an awesome day getting, getting drafted and graduating same day. Um, didn't happen. So I remember, you know, keeping my phone like, okay, maybe it's going to happen when I was moving all my stuff out of my dorm and stuff like that. But next day I woke up and, and it happened. So, nothing too crazy it was kind of just sitting by myself at home my parents were at work and my sister at school and stuff but um you know it was obviously what i dreamed of for a long time so it was definitely an, definitely an awesome moment um but um nothing no crazy draft story just kind of yeah. run of the mill no that's all good though i mean you got drafted that's all that matters i mean like I, yeah yeah I've had guys who have at draft parties, some guys who said, you know what, I'm not even going to worry uh, about that. I'm just going to let that ha what happens happens. Um, you said yeah. your parents are nobody was there. Like, how did you break the news to them? <laughs> once? Yeah, I mean, so everybody was definitely follow like sure. everybody, okay. everybody's definitely following. They're all kind of checking on their phones at work or um, stuff like that. And, and I kind of. Um, I don't know who. I'm trying to think. Oh, okay. So, because somebody kind of like gave me a little heads up that I was getting taken before. So sometimes the team calls you, sometimes they don't. So the angels didn't call me. It was one of my friends I played in school was working in, in the front office with one of the other big league teams. So I guess they're kind of on like a call where you hear the name getting taken. That's coming a little bit faster than the, like stream of it. Mm -hmm. Um. So he texted me like, "Let's go, dude! Congratulations, whatever." I'm like, "What? I what's going on? You know?" So I kind of like was looking. Then I'm like, "Who's coming up? Like, which teams that I talk to a lot?" I'm like, "Okay, maybe it's the Angels there. I don't know." Um. So then. Once, you know, they tweet it out and the, um, you know, stream kind of says it, then everybody kind of found out at the same time as I did. Um, so then, you know, get a big stream of texts and calls and, and all that. So that's incredible. I mean, congratulations. Obviously, it's the yeah. years yeah, of, of hard work that you put into it and, and your family as well to finally, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, you know, come into that one moment when you get drafted. Um, yeah. So you get drafted by the Angels, obviously an organization that has talent like like big name talent everywhere right yeah. um were you in like were you in minor league camp like were, were, you, were you able to see um during like spring training and stuff were you able to see like trout obviously these big name guys like were there anyone you ever like maybe talk to um kind of like pick their brain a little bit so my first in 2019 when i got drafted i actually didn't even go because it's you know after the college season yep. you know after spring training so i didn't even go to arizona i, I went straight to orem um which is like our short season affiliated at the time and, and played there. So really the only people I met in the organization were, um, you know, the, the other guys playing in Orem. I, uh, Angleton Simmons actually came and rehabbed with us. So that was cool. That was kind of the first like current big leaguer at the time that I had met and played with. Um, so then I showed up for spring training in 2020 and I was at like early camp actually doing, um, 
like some pitchers stuff, training stuff. Um, and there were guys there, but there weren't really a ton of big leaders out there yet that we were interacting with. And, and it was kind of a little separate and it was early. There were really only probably like 10 or 15 guys out there, mostly minor leaguers. Um, and then right when everybody started filing in for spring training, COVID happened. Um, so that kind of got shot down quick. And then tw- uh, like that whole year, I was just at home. I wasn't at the alternate site or anything. Um, so then last year was kind of my first actual spring training. And because of COVID, it was very segmented. Um, like the big leagues kind of in a bubble away from minor league or so. Didn't really have much interaction then until this year. Um, got to throw in one of the big leagues from training games and, and definitely more crossover. Um, like throw my bull, some of my bullpens at that side and, and um, you know, just like more more interaction. And obviously in, in AAA, you kind of are up and down with all mm-hmm. these guys and, and kind of meeting everyone. So ne- it was never like a – spring training shock like whoa i'm here right now kind of moment um but just you know kind of only got to experience really one more normal spring training this year even though we were kind of at two different complexes so not even really normal spring training yeah and you talk about like the your triple a um in 2021 you went through four levels of of like rookie or no yeah low a, yeah rookie low a, low a. High a double a triple a Right. Yeah, so yeah. Low uh, just a. just low A, high A, double A, triple A. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So at what point were you just you just didn't unpack? Like you're just like I'm not even gonna unpack because I'm throwing so well. Like I may just make it all the way up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely. Um. You know, it was good. Definitely having a good year last year and and like kind of being in a rhythm. Um. You know, struggling this year to start. I'm trying to just find that rhythm back a little bit. And you know, it's it's nice having that last year to bank on knowing it's in there and, and kind of knowing I can have success. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, you know, went and was kind of, you know, one of the older guys in low a little bit and kind of said, all right, I'm going to try to pitch my way out of here and, and see what I can do. Like a lot of the guys in my draft class are in high a, like that was kind of my first goal is like, let's see how quick I can get out of here and, and try to you know kind of meet up, meet up with those guys and see what happens. And then, you know, got to high a and my first started through really well. I'm like, okay, I can, I can do well here. Like maybe if I can just throw really well here for, you know, who knows how long I can make it double A. Like that was always my goal in the beginning of last year. Um, and then, you know, I, I strung together a bunch of good starts and, um, you know, like was putting up a lot of zeros and, um, you know, not really walking anyone, throwing a lot of strikes. Okay, you know, we'll see what happens. And then I remember we were in um, Hillsboro and my dad and my sister had just flown in that night um to meet me out there um you know just a visit and, and hang out for the week and after the game i found out i was going to double a so i they just got off the plane um and i said hey like that's awesome but i think we're gonna have to go back to the airport um you know turn around and I've, i'm flying to alabama tomorrow so that was that was fun how they just flew cross country from new york and then um they ended up i left that night they ended up leaving the next day they got a flight to to huntsville so um so yeah, then yeah, then when I got there, I was kind of like, okay, like you know, let's try to establish myself here, and um, you know, this is kind of this is where my goal was before the end of the year, and now like there's still two months left, so who knows what'll happen. Um, and I threw all right in my first start in Double A, and then my second start just kind of got shell, like one of like I guess kind of do for one of those after kind of just blowing through it all year. So I was like, okay, well that's fine, like I have time to recover from this, still two months here, whatever, and then kind of got another little hot streak. Um, and next thing I know, I was flying to Salt Lake and it was like, okay, well, I guess got the, got the tour of the organization for the year. So that was cool and definitely a cool experience being able to, to make it up there my first full year when, you know, starting in low A, you're, you're kind of thinking, okay, well, if I'm going to make it, it's going to have to go this level and this level and, mm-hmm. and like that. And then next thing you know, you know, you feel definitely a little bit closer. Yo, for sure. Cause there's guys who will play in low A for a year uh high a for a couple years and like it's just kind of that longer you know path to where they will ultimately want to go um you just pretty much like buzz through it all like you know (laughs) forget that i'm just gonna do it in a year uh which is incredible um how fast are you how fast do you throw out of curiosity kind of a wide range in the beginning of last year i was seeing a lot more 94 95 96s um this year i think part of my you know, I'm not having my my greatest outings. I'm more in the low 90s, um, 90, 91, 92, some 93s. Um, you know, every once in a while, I've been seeing a 94 in an outing. 
you know, trying to get back on most of those. We definitely, you know, not necessarily an excuse, but I think a lot of our guys, as the weather's getting warmer, are kind of seeing their velo come back up. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that'll happen for me. Um, so yeah, kind of, kind of anywhere as, as a smaller guy, like my, my velo can kind of range throughout an outing. Um, you know, depending well, I mean, you on still the situation. Feel pretty hard. I mean, like, how tall are you? Uh, I'm like 5'11, probably. Yeah. Oh, we'll say five, you know, we'll say six feet. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, so people look at you and they're like, okay, he can't throw that hard. And then you throw in 94, 90. That's, that's pretty good, but, you know? For, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, definitely. I mean, I think it's crazy how, how hard everyone's throwing nowadays, no matter, yeah. you know, even, even the smallest guys are, are definitely bringing a little bit. So, yeah. No, I mean, definitely like um, have enough, have enough in the tank for, you know, when, when my other stuff is working. But, um, yeah, no, I, I, I ideally I, I sit at the higher velos a little bit more and that's kind of what I'm going my best. So, you know, that as the, as the get into the middle of the season, as the weather gets better, hopefully that'll kind of be where I'm at. Um, what was the hardest jump? Obviously you go through four different mm-hmm. levels. Like what was, cause I've heard double A from like low way to double or high to double A is like mm-hmm. the hardest like transition. Um, mm-hmm. did you see it that way or was it maybe double A to triple A? Yeah, I would, I mean, in, in terms of how I've thrown, definitely double A, triple A. I think, I think it's probably double A to triple A, just in terms of like, you know, everybody in the lineup really, there's no, there are no easy outs. You know what I mean? The guys hitting eighth and ninth here are still guys, most of them have been in the big leagues. You know what I mean? So it's, it's definitely, you know, each lineup is pretty loaded, um, you know, pitching in, in altitude all the time where it's like, you give a ball in the air. It's like, uh, that yeah. one, I think I beat him, but that might be going out. You, you don't, you never really know. Um, and then in terms of, you know, strike zones a little bit smaller and just like, you know, guys have had more experience. They kind of know what they're looking for and, and know their strengths and have, you know, just a slightly um, more sharpened approach. Just like, mm-hmm. you know, there it's there's definitely, a, you know, a ton of talent at every level of the minor leagues. But I think here it's just like a lot more refined and guys kind of know um, like what they do well, what they're looking for to have success. And, and you know, it just makes it a little bit um you know, a little bit harder just just pitching against that that kind of competition, for sure. Um, so like you obviously have have the experience of playing everywhere in so many different leagues. Mm-hmm. Um, where is like this one city? I love asking these questions. Like, what what is the one city you get off the bus and you look around and you just think like, where am I? Like, I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um, that would probably be in I think it's called Kodak, so where the where the Tennessee Smokies play the Cubs Double A. Okay. Um, it's literally like the, the field, the hotel, there's like a Taco Bell and a McDonald's and there's like nothing else within like, anywhere. Um, so that's definitely kind of a, a little bit of a middle of nowhere spot. Um, in triple a, you're kind of more in bigger cities, round rock, just around the field. There's not a ton. It was really nice field. I, I enjoyed the time there, but like it's kind of our hotels there. It's like a five minute walk to the field and there's like a coffee shop, a couple restaurants and not much else. Um, but I didn't really get to see many of the way, the, like the the visiting locations in low A and in high A. There was kind of stuff everywhere. And in AAA, most of the cities are pretty big, so I, I would probably say those two. But when you were in high A, go to the places. Yeah, when you were in high A, did you ever play in Beloit, Wisconsin? Or no? No. So our high A was actually in the Northwest oh, League last year. Yes. So we were all like, where was it? Like Hillsboro, Spokane, uh, okay. Everett, all those kind of places. Yeah. Okay, and you you lucked out. I mean, I, when I asked, like, you know, what's the worst stadiums you guys have ever played? Yeah, at? a lot of those Midwest League teams oh, get uh get, get Beloit a bad just, rap for sure. Yeah, and Beloit, well, they just got a brand new stadium. This is their first year, but prior to this season and toward maybe mm-hmm. the second half of last season, like it was, it was like abominable. With uh, it was just terrible. Their their stadium yeah. there. Um, do you have any um interesting um like funny minor league stories? And I say funny. Um, I shouldn't say funny, but it, to us as fans listening to this, like mm-hmm. we're thinking like, how do you guys just go through that? Like Brad case is a great example. Like his bus broke down the day. He was supposed to record with me the night before his bus really? breaks down. They're in the middle of like Indiana. Nothing is there. They have to like Uber eats Taco Bell. Cause that was the only thing that would deliver to them. <laughs> yeah. um, and then their bus breaks down again. And then they end up uh, sharing a bus with their coaches. Cause their bus also broke down. But they were able to just kind of somehow make it. It was a whole night. The whole night they were yeah, stuck yeah. in the middle of nowhere. Um, I'm trying to think. I definitely so I remember in, in 2019 when I was in Orm, um, short season after the draft, we like 
I think it was in Grand Junction. We were we pulled into the hotel in Grand Junction after playing the night before, traveling all night. Um, so it was probably like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. We had a game that that day. So um, yeah, everybody's like, okay, let's get ready, go to sleep. Um, and we got into the hotel, and they didn't have any rooms for us. They were like, yeah, you guys are booked for tomorrow, not today. Like, sorry. So everybody's kind of standing there like cranky, half asleep off the bus, and we're like, okay, well, what are we supposed to be doing right now? Um, so we ended up kind of just like sleeping on the floor of the hotel conference room. So that was, that was an interesting one, getting a couple hours of sleep. And I remember like everybody's starving, there's nothing open. And we were like waiting up cranky. So like, it was a double tree hotel. So they have like the cookies at the front desk. So they just brought us like tubs of cookies. And that was kind of everybody's midnight snack, just like housing five or six big cookies and sleeping on the hardwood floor of the conference room. So that was probably the most like gritty minor league situation. Wow. Um, but we, we had a bus breakdown last year in high A, but we were taking two buses at the time. Um, so we kind of just piled everyone onto one bus, like not all the all of everybody's bags and equipment fit underneath. So we had some of the bags and equipment like on the bus with us. Yep. Um, so that was like, you know, you're sitting cramped next to a guy and there's like the pitching machine next to you is a little bit interesting. But um, other than that, nothing, nothing too crazy. Yeah, and it's crazy what you, what you guys go through. And like credit to you because obviously, like the minor leagues is a grind. Um, mm-hmm. I say this all the time. Like baseball fans, like we see uh, the final product, like the major leaguers, but we don't see right. like the years of like grinding and just struggling to like because um, like minor leagues, we, you guys don't get paid a ton. Um, and it's obviously there's uh, all this stuff with my, uh, more than baseball. Baseball advocates uh, adopt a minor leaguer. There's kind of mm-hmm. this push like advocate for minor leaguers right. um but you guys go through such a struggle um which is why i love doing this podcast just kind of getting to know some of these stories here um have you ever had any like funny fan interactions um i ask this all the time and i get the most random like like i've had guys say they've had kids ask to sign their foreheads i've had uh guys you know approach the bus ask them for autographs thinking they're you know different players and don't even know their names Mm-hmm. um like how, how, or like, yeah there's definitely them. there's definitely a lot of a lot of the autograph hawks who oh, yeah. will will ask and sometimes be like hey and you know they say the wrong name and say oh no i'm sorry not me and then they're also the ones who are just like very um they don't have any shame they're just like hey what's your name and then sometimes you know you tell them your name and then they look they're like oh nothing for you uh so it's funny it's it's funny sometimes walking next to some of the uh you know bigger name prospects or higher draft picks and like They'll, you know, you're in a group and like, what are you guys' names? And, you know, like you're sometimes it's, you know, a guy who they have a million cards for and then you're the guy they have none for, stuff like that. Um, I mean, definitely the most fan interactions just happen when when kids are shouting and screaming for baseballs. Um, like Sacramento, we were in this past week and the bullpen is like right there in the outfield, everybody's standing on top of you. Yeah. Um, it always it always cracks me up when like the, the pitcher warming up to go into the game might have the next hitter going in the next inning, whatever. And like, there's a kid trying to, can I have the ball? Can I have the ball? It's like, this guy's got to warm up, you know, like yeah. he's got to, uh, you know, and I don't, I don't really think I was like that as a kid. Like, I think I kind of understood a little bit, like, okay, maybe if they're just sitting down, hanging out, like you can ask for a ball, but like this guy's, you know, warming up, throwing 95 mile hour fastballs right now, like trying to get himself ready to go in the game. He's probably not going to be able to just like flip you yeah. the baseball and be like, yeah, well, I don't need one to warm up. It's fine. Um, yeah. my favorite is when they but, say, can I have your bat afterwards or can I have your glove? Yeah. And you know, as minor leaguers, yeah. you guys, the, yeah, the, get... the, the, can I, the, can I have your glove is, is a good one. It's like, I get one of these and you know, they're, yeah. it, I, I can't really just get another one. Um, so yeah, it's the, the, can I have your glove is definitely a, a funny one. Um, yeah, no. And it's, it's crazy just hearing like, um, like in Appleton, we're kind of the stadium that's my, one of the closer stadiums to me. Um, it's also similar, like the, the fans can kind of like walk right over the bullpen mm-hmm. and underneath it. Uh, so you hear those, those like chirps and stuff from like the fans and, um, like opposing, opposing pitchers, like, you know, you, they'll hear the chirps from other, from the other, uh, teams fans and all that. Um, what is your go-to snack when you're, uh, when you're not pitching and you're just hanging out? I'm definitely a big sunflower seeds guy. Um, other than sunflower seeds, trying to think i mean i it really depends i try not to snack too much during the game which i definitely do sometimes yeah um i don't know sunflower seeds sometimes they'll chew gum not a ton um there's always like high chews in our clubhouse so like they'll kind of soft candy yeah Yeah, so i'll definitely the strawberry ones i kind of just pick out and eat those 
Um, otherwise, it kind of just varies on like what's in the clubhouse that each each clubhouse for home and road are different in terms of what they have. Um, so it kind of just varies, but I don't really have like a one go to. This is this is what I'm having every day. Yeah, and so like and like I said, it's funny because you you gone through all four levels and um, so fast. Like, did you notice when when did you start noticing like the spread started getting a little bit better after the games? Definitely, definitely double A. Our I mean, our double A clubhouse is like a big league clubhouse. It's really unbelievable the new stadium they put there. Um, so definitely the the food, the travel, the snacks, the just the clubhouse as a whole, the lockers, everything kind of step up there. Um, Triple A, it's more like consistent. No matter where you go, you're going to get a pretty good spread and and kind of have a good good options everywhere. But I think in Double A is definitely one of the the bigger jumps, kind of that you could you could tell um, in terms of like the, just the little things got got a little bit better, you know. For sure. Um, a couple of things I want to ask you before we get off here. Um, you, obviously, like Manfred has been trying to change the game, and like the the minor leagues is pretty much like their guinea pig. Right. Um, you go through every level and every level is having different variants of like role changes. Like um, you can't step off or like the pitch count or yeah. the pitch clock. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of these rules that maybe you think are actually beneficial or in, <laughs> which ones are you hope to be scrapped pretty soon? Yeah, I think the, so we just started using that automated ball strike system last week. I think it could be good. I think there's definitely some nuance that need to add to it. And I think there are times it almost like gets shifted. Um, where like they definitely need to make it consistent and like they're like I remember having the ninth inning in the ninth inning a couple of weeks ago like they literally had just gotten shifted so like pitches outside were being called strikes pitches like just middle in were balls um, which obviously is not good not ideal but yeah. I think like it it has a chance to be good in the future um, I think everybody kind of likes the pitch clock in terms of making the games faster I think there are times where like in the ninth inning of a one run game we've had guys strike out because they are not in the batter's box quick enough or we've had walks happen because the pitcher's taking an extra second. Um, but I think like it, it could be good. Just do you think in terms of the automatic striker ball? Yeah. Like that's the, I think that's it's so in the beginning it was know. in the beginning it was happening a little bit more and it's good. If, if it's like the fourth inning of a seven, nothing game, it's good. You got to get on the mound and right. get going. You know, it is, it is good to speed it up. I just think there needs to be a little bit more feel in terms of like, in the eighth or ninth inning, we kind of just like let it go. If it if it's egregious and the guy's taking thirty seconds to throw a pitch, okay, we get it. But um, or they can just add a little bit more time because I think we're doing like fourteen seconds with no one on base, and the hitter has to be ready at nine. And then with guys on base like nineteen, and the hitter is ready, I think it's still nine. I don't know. Um, but like maybe we just up it a little bit if it's a close game or in the certain inning or something like that. Um, but I mean, I think overall, like people kind of like the pitch clock because we played some or we played a lot of quicker games. Um, so as the players, I think we kind of like it not being out there for three and a half hours every day. It's, you know, we're getting a lot more two and a half hour games. So I think, I think the pitch clock could be good. Uh, I think like a lot of the step off rules and that kind of stuff are trying a little bit too hard to change things. And and I don't think they're really having crazy significant impact on the games other than just being a little bit like annoying. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, I, I think, I think the best one so far has been the pitch clock, the big, like we have bigger bases here. I think is it's that, you know I, has that changed I think it, it's, like it's to avoid injury and maybe help oh. stolen bases a little bit and stuff like that you know giving guys a little extra room to slide. I mean, I don't notice them as that big of a change, but if they are limiting injuries and stuff, I think you know I don't, I don't think that's something that you're going to put in the big leagues. Be like, this is changing baseball. You know, I think you know if it's yeah. a small change, it could be beneficial. Um, I'm trying to think of any of the other ones. I, I think those are kind of the ones. Like, there's there's really not much. Um, not much else. It's like a significant change. That mm-hmm. I think is super beneficial, but right on. Um, so w- when you're not pitching um, or, you mm-hmm. know, preparing, like, what do you do for fun? Like, do you, do you, you, you don't golf or you mentioned that, or do you golf? Right. No, not, not really. No, especially not really during the season. No. Um, are you so a what do I do guy? for fun? Don't really play a ton of video games. So I, I would say depending on where I definitely like to whatever city we're in, like kind of get up early and explore a little bit. So, um, you know, kind of like take it as a chance to see a city. So like this past week in Sacramento, I was kind of like before I went to bed, I'd be like, okay, maybe we try out this place for lunch tomorrow. It's a three mile walk away. I'll walk here, kind of see that, like, you know, walk by the Capitol building in Sacramento, um, walk to this downtown area, walk to the East side area, different kind of places. Um, 
and then other than that, like, you know, kind of just hang out with the guys, go see who's grabbing lunch, who's doing this, that. Um, I like to read and like do crosswords and Sudoku and stuff to kind of keep my mind going a little bit. Um, so definitely some of that. Um, I'm trying to think what I mean, I, I love watching other sports, kind of how we were talking about before with basketball and hockey. So I'm definitely like a big sports fan, um, even a little bit like the French Open's going on right now, which in, they're in the mornings here because they're playing in France. So like Nadal and Djokovic, like two all time great. Not like I know a ton about tennis, but you know, I was a little interested. So I was watching a little bit of that match before. Um, just, you know, little things like, get up and walk and get a coffee in the morning or stuff like that. Nothing like we really so much of our times at the field. So like we have little things at the field, have fun. Like at home, we have a little like basketball hoop and ping pong table and stuff like that. So right. that's kind of like, you know, I, I spend a good amount of time in there if we get to the field early and, and have a little time before stretch or, or pregame meetings and stuff like that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm, and we're, we're in the team apartments this year. So I have roommates. So, you know, we'll throw a show on or um, kind of stuff like that, but not really a video games guy, more so like kind of seeing what, what everybody's doing and, and kind of exploring a little bit and, and doing things like that. Yeah. Um, and also you're in triple a, you're close to the majors. Hopefully it's this year you make your major league debut, you know, we'll speak that into existence. Um, when it does happen, um, I'm looking like ahead of the schedule. I think you guys have already played in Chicago, the, the angels, but I think they come to the uh, Minnesota still later on in the year. So hopefully by that time, you know, you're, okay. you're in the yeah, majors. yeah. I'll, I'll have it turned around and be up there, and yeah, that'd be exciting. Yeah, and you gotta let me know. Maybe we'll definitely we'll, we'll drive down there. It's not too far. I mean, it's a couple hours, but it's not it's not that terrible. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe we can uh, catch up. You know, grab yeah, we can meet up and, definitely. Uh, yeah, do something there. That sounds like a plan. If we can speak it into existence, that that sounds you good. You got to it. Me. And I'm gonna be cheering for you. And like I said, like on my Twitter bio, it says, you know, minor league hype man, like unofficial. Uh, yeah. Like I I love like the journeys that you guys are going through. So I'm I'm excited for you. Um, I wanted the, a guy that I just had on, um, uh, maybe a couple months ago, he just made his major, he just got called up. I'm hoping tonight I'll watch in a little bit, see if he actually pitches. Um, uh, okay. but I'm like, I would awesome. go, but I have, I'm recovering from COVID. So can't right, 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 yeah. kind of unfortunate cool. timing, but like, yeah. I'm, I'm hyped for you. I'm excited to see what, uh, you know, what your future holds and, uh, what to have you back on again. Awesome. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me on. It was, it was great meeting you.